Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to discuss the idea of significant figures or significant digits as it is used in science, <clears throat> in physics, in chemistry. And uh, we'll be discussing about the rules that are to be used for counting the number of significant digits in a reported measured value. Now, <clears throat> in science, why we need this concept of significant figures or significant digits? Let's try and understand this first. Let's say we are asked to measure the length of this marker pen. Now, if somebody uses a rudimentary, a simple type of uh, ruler that comes in our geometry box and measures the length of this marker pen, this person might report something like 6.2 centimeter, as I've mentioned here. <clears throat> now, if this person brings in a slightly more precise instrument, let's say this person brings in a vernier calipers, and using the vernier calipers, uh, he reports 6.18 centimeter. What we will notice is that this last digit, the 2 over here, has changed. It has become 1 and we have an additional digit 8 over here. So the last digit in any measured value can change if we bring a more accurate instrument, a more precise instrument, if it is used for making the measurement, the last digit may change. Similarly, if we bring in, a, in an instrument that can measure up to three decimal places, the same person might measure this quantity as 6.177 centimeter with this digit again undergoing a change. So the last digit <clears throat> in any measured quantity is going to be uncertain. Science does not permit us to report more than one uncertain digit. For example, if I were to make this measurement using a foot ruler and then I make a bit of an estimation saying that the measured value appears to be a little bit more than uh, 6.2 centimeter. Let's say I estimate visually and say that this is a little more than 6.25 centimeter. So I therefore report 6.25 or 6.26 centimeter based on my estimation. Science does not permit this because in that case we will be reporting two uncertain digits. This uncertain digit as well as the five or six that I have added using my mental estimation. Science does not permit the use of such mental estimations. Science requires that we measure and report as per the capability of the measuring instrument and there should be no mental estimations involved. And therefore, we measure and report only one uncertain digit. <clears throat> now, these digits, all the certain digits underlined by green here and the one uncertain digit together constitute what are called significant figures or significant digits. All these certain digits plus the one uncertain digit, they add up to give us the number of significant digits. Now, <clears throat> when somebody reports measured values and we are looking at those numbers, then we often need to count the number of significant figures, significant digits in those reported measured values. 
Now, there are certain simple rules for counting the number of significant digits in reported measured values. Now, these are very simple rules actually, and we'll be looking at them one by one. The rules for counting the number of significant figures. In any measured reported value, the non-zero digits are always going to be significant. So if we look at these numbers, 4.32 centimeter, then all the three digits are significant. And in the blue circles here, I have noted the number of significant digits. As in these numbers, I have noted the number of significant digits here. 4.32 centimeter involves three significant digits. The first two are certain ones and the last one here is uncertain, 38.2 meter. The first two are certain and the last one is uncertain and therefore we have three significant digits. So non-zero digits are always going to be significant. So there's no confusion here. Any confusion, if at all, arises with zeros. So let's have a look at zeros. Leading zeros, these are zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit. These zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit are never significant in any science, in physics, in chemistry, we never take them to be significant. So this number here has one certain digit and one uncertain digit. And therefore, this has two significant digits. The leading zeros to the left of the first non-zero digit are never significant. Then we have another category of zeros, which I call caged zeros. These are zeros which are in between two non-zero digits. These zeros are always significant. And therefore, in this number here, there are three certain digits and one uncertain digit. Together, therefore, we have four significant digits. Then there is another category of zeros called the trailing zeros. Now these trailing zeros are the zeros to the right of the last non-zero digit. These trailing zeros, if they appear in a number with a decimal, this number here, 42.00, is a number having a decimal in it. In such numbers, these zeros are always significant. And then the other category of trailing zeros, these are zeros without the decimal. Trailing zeros in a number where there is no decimal. These zeros are never taken to be significant. So this number here, 4200 meter, involves only two significant digits certain, uncertain, and therefore we have two significant digits. Whereas over here, where you have a decimal 42.00, the first three digits are assumed certain and the last digit is uncertain, adding up to a total of four significant digits. And that's pretty much it regarding the rules for counting significant figures. But one or two more simple points here. In counting significant figures, pure numbers are always assumed to have an infinite number of significant figures. For instance, if I say there are 42 students sitting in my class, then it has this number 42 has an infinite number of significant figures because after 42, I can put a decimal and a zero and I would still be perfectly correct because that zero would be certain. You cannot have number of students in decimals. 
So number of students has to be 42 or 43. You cannot have 42.125 students. So after 42, if I put a decimal, I can put any number of zeros and they would all be certain. And therefore, such numbers which result from a counting process, a head count, for example, uh, such numbers have infinite number of significant figures. Another important thing to remember here is that when you have a change of units, it should not result in a change in number of significant figures. For example, if I have a number 4.200 kilometer, it has four significant digits. The last two zeros are significant because the number has a decimal. If I convert this to meter and I end up with 4200 meter, the last two zeros become non-significant and therefore now we count two significant figures. This should not happen. A change in number of, uh, a change in uh, unit should not result in a change in number of significant figures. And therefore, in science, we always report numbers in what is called the scientific notation. In scientific notation, we will report this as 4.200 into 10 to the power 0 kilometer. And when we convert this to meter, we will say 4.200 into 10 to the power 3 meter. Now, the powers of 10 here do not have any impact on the number of significant figures. And therefore, the number of significant digits does not change. The number remains 4.200, whether reported in meter or in kilometer. So these are some basic points regarding the counting of significant figures. Thank you very much for uh, watching this video. In our next video, we will be looking at the rules for making calculations and rounding off appropriately according to the number of significant figures. Thanks for watching.